We need two things to happen here this episode. We need Emma to realize that our boy Itsumi has another woman and he don't care for her. Or he does, but not in that way. And <laughs> and we also need more moments between Yuki and Itsumi. That's all I want. That's all I want. And I don't think that's a lot to ask for. And I think that we're going to kind of get that. Now, it could go a route where, you know, Emma decides that she wants to go play the villain, which I don't think is going to end up happening. I think that we can use this as like a way to kind of teach her a lesson almost. And, not, and I don't mean like in a negative way, but I mean more so like she'll realize that he has somebody else that he's like taking up these things and learning these things for that like he never really has shown an interest or probably done before maybe and then she'll kind of be like okay i clearly don't have anything that he likes or whatever and then she'll back off uh and it can be just like simply like that or we can just play around in a variety of other ways with her uh that can be more positive and kind of progress her as a person and a character a lot more which is more of what i'm kind of hoping for uh and we're just gonna have to see that plays out Feel like it all the like and subscribe to me not to my feel for Instagram for the discussion. Let me comments with this episode or series. Let's go with the episode four. Why the fuck would he want to learn that? Yeah. Oh, it's another language, and he clearly likes languages. Mm. He felt that real rush. All these different experiences, Yuki. Not nice. Oh, he's getting excited about be strong, Yuki. <laughs> I think I get it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you do anyways. Are you sure that you have a lot Conversationally, we can be fluent. Or more. More. Yes. Yeah, I guess that's more of the difference. <laughs> Why do you assume that they'd all be crying? <laughs> you coming to my fucking place? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> okay. I hate how he only responds in one word, though. He'd be pissing me the fuck off. <laughs> Everything he says. Go, Yuki, go. Got some nice choices here. going all out there my god nice oh shit <laughs> what good is being pretty when the guy you want doesn't like you <laughs> おい、虫。お。誰誰誰呼んでんの友達。マジで可愛い。<笑> 
What are you going through? Or do you just like the drink? <laughs> yep. Such a bad mindset. <laughs> I have questions. We will discuss later. <laughs> りんちゃんが店長さんの車で迎えに来てくれるって言ってたけど、家まで来てもらうのも申し訳ないし。うーん。それに家を出たところで、この前みたいに大志くんに見つかりたくない。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー。オッケー
I'm gonna look at his eyes. <laughs> the two of them are like parents now for Yuki. Well, each of them specifically for each of their friends, but in a way, it's like they're watching over. <laughs> Nice. Wow. We got fucking everything here. <laughs> Yuki seems so excited over everything too. What'd you find? Yuki. Oh. あ。ゆきが小さくに。いつには言わないでね。ゆきちゃんを呼ぶとき、いつ。すごい優しい声だったからさ。そんなに違いがわかるのかな。いや。何? <笑> Great questions to ask, Yuki. It might be better for you just to assume he always talks to you like that. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love Ren. <laughs> Probably hasn't even left her fucking down. Hmm.なるほどな。電車でありがとうの手話してきた時のあの雪の目。うーん。なんか俺ずっと忘れらんねえし、自分がまだ英語わかんねえ時、誰かに伝えたい時。俺あんな目してたのかもな。じゃあ、今度海外行くとき、キャリーに詰め込んで。ゆき、入る。それって一緒に。No, that not not a literal thing, but like uh。嘘嘘。荷物じゃねえよ。いつみさんの言うこと。<laughs> this girl's falling too hard. It's over for her. <laughs> mm. Okay, there's plenty of sense, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's helping. Yeah. He won't. She has no clue that he said all that. <laughs> mm. Perfect. On the long road home. None?一緒にご飯行きませんか？うん。おお、結構分かってきたな。Nice。The sense of accomplishment, the the good feeling that you get. Kaido, I'm fucking good, bro. Perfect. Yeah. Listen, as long as Emma's not waiting outside when we get there, we're good. Yes, sir. Most starting to get the point. Check. Shopping trip and time together. Check. Both of the couples. Potentially, hopefully, that's the goal, right? 
check. Progression between both of them, check. <laughs> and episode that's way too cute for its own good check so we're doing great you know <laughs> everything literally everything that we wanted you know it all it all came out really good and i'm, I'm thrilled i really am I, I don't i go into every one of these discussions now just wondering what the fuck i want to talk about <laughs> because i'm so like the first two episodes it made sense there's things presented i was like i gotta talk about this these ones i'm just like I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be here. It's it's so fun. Uh, <laughs> it's such a wonderful story too. I I really like the idea of shows, especially when we are developing multiple people, but then allowing other people to be brought into and fully see other people's worlds and see other people's kind of just the way that they live uh, and the way that they've kind of always experienced or done things and stuff like that. And I think that's fantastic. That's so much why I like romance and stuff like that, because a lot of times it's not just two people who are like, oh, these two people are really popular. They should get together or something. It's usually like this person's a fucking loner. Or this person's not, or this person has this thing that's different about them. And this person has this thing that's different about them, or this person presents themselves this way when they're actually this way or something, you know? And then you can allow these two people who never in a million worlds would have thought that they, you know, would come together and, and create something like this and actually have like this sort of connection or relationship. They just couldn't have pictured that something like this would ever actually come along and happen. And they've had this this opportunity, right, to meet somebody like they're the other person that they're coming along with. And then it creates such like a beautiful story because you get to see these two people kind of really expand and, and see something so special. Uh, and I think that's something that's so wonderful about a lot of these types of stories. Whether they end good or bad, you know, whether we have three people in the fold or two other people, you know what I mean? Like whether, whatever the dynamic is, whether it's just a one-on-one -on -one thing or we're in a harem or we just, you know, like whatever we're trying to do here, it allows you to at least experience and see and, and kind of fill some sort of void or understand what it would be like to be with this person or, you know, how this person makes you feel or like they don't. And it's just, I don't know, it creates such fun experiences, I think for the viewer at least to kind of get attached to and enjoy and then find these characters and these, these different dynamics and things that you never probably even thought of yourself. Uh, coming together and I think that's so wonderful just to kind of watch and I, that's why I like stories like this where we get multiple kind of couples that it seems like we we form uh, throughout it because it allows you to see different sides of it but also when they are friends with each other in different sort of ways it allows you to see the way that they kind of look after each other as we end up seeing like what Ren just kind of like looking over Yuki right and being so like concerned for or it's only his friend just like the way that he looks over him or the way that both of them were looking over within you know the things that were happening in the movie that he was trying to make throughout the episode and everything and they look on like so proudly in a way right and it's the same thing whenever Run's trying to go do something Yuki kind of chairs her on and it's just like the encouragement that we all get and it's like we're sharing this and we're doing this stuff together uh instead of just kind of isolating and having to operate you know on our own and be be in silent here while we're just doing everything and we can kind of all come together uh and make one thing that I think is really fun we'll talk about some moments that are like just really good and that I enjoy when I skip through the episode in a minute. But the only thing that I really like grasp onto that I like just want to present, I think. Well, there's two things, and we'll start with the shorter one, I guess, first, which is specifically with Yugi's friend being so we, we've talked about him extensively and the way that he kind of claims her almost and tries to like be a little bit possessive over her and the way that he kind of treats her and boxes her in and doesn't let her be free uh and we've talked about that extensively i think every episode <laughs> for the most part uh and we continuously see that again with him constantly getting angry uh, and just the way that he kind of treats her, the way he acts and the way that he does these like abrupt things as if he's somebody in a similar situation to her where he has no experience with people whether it's romantically or just in whatever sort of way and then he acts a little too comfortable around her and does things that clearly she doesn't want him to do and then like kind of bother her uh to a point that like she doesn't like tell him off or do anything along those lines but she just like is like dude stop or whatever right uh those are the things that i'm just like i fucking hate this guy and i can't stand him but then you also have moments where he's just like kind of laying on her and stuff and it seems like almost he where he's almost like lost i think and it's not overly like expressed, I don't think, but just the, the idea that I got from it is somebody who really wants something or wants to express something and convey this thing to somebody for whether it's the way he feels or the way he wants like things to kind of be or whatever it is. And no matter what he thinks is the right way or right approach for him to do things, every stop that he kind of takes just seems to be wrong. And he's like almost exhausted all of his options. He kind of feels like because he just doesn't properly know what he should be doing here, uh, causing 
him to just kind of be exhausted here and not know really anything that he is doing. And that's why he just looks so like sad or kind of just like out of it when he was just sitting there on the train. And it just makes you feel a little bit bad for the guy, right? I'm sure most people have, you know, had many experiences where they've really wanted to make something work. Uh, and just for whatever reason, they just can't get it off the ground or they can't express themselves in the way that they really feel like they should or they can, you know, uh, and it just things aren't coming out properly. And it's causing this this sort of issue and the sort of rift between you and this other person that you probably care deeply about. And he wants to probably convey that to her, but he doesn't fully understand how. Uh, and it's just it's wearing on him a little bit. Now, he doesn't have to do any of the stuff and, you know, go above and beyond the ways that he's like thinking that he kind of is and he's trying to. Uh, but it's still something on the inside that he probably still wants to convey to Yuki herself or just about all the way that he's kind of acting and the way he's being or the way he feels or whatever. And he's just struggling in a way to do that. Uh, and then it's also like just the moment when he ends up seeing Itsomi and he's just like letting him know, like, don't do this from behind or whatever. It's going to scare and like all these things that we've heard him say over the past couple episodes. It's almost like, a. I'll give you these things that you probably don't know, like just make sure that she's comfortable and he's trying to show that he cares in certain ways for her, but just the way that he kind of approaches it and then calls her a fool and does all this, it's just like, it's so wrong. Uh, so it makes you like see some good in him, like in certain ways he's trying to do things. But for the most part, it's just the way he goes about everything is almost entirely wrong all the time to the point that I just can't bother. Uh, that was supposed to be the short one. Now, the other one that's supposed to be the short one is what we'll kind of discuss here. Uh, right at the beginning of the episode here where we end up having it's way further back than I thought hold on we'll go back in a moment though but we end up having this moment here with with these two here where Emma specifically goes out of her way and she invites Buddy to go get drinks and go get food and do all this where the first time that we get introduced to them really is when we end up seeing both of them come uh come in while the others are working and just kind of being all drunk and just being kind of a mess after having a full night out right he accepts without like a real smile or anything kind of on his face uh and then we end up showing up here where we end up start talking about what the problem is why she's acting the way she is why she's drinking why she wanted to do all of this stuff right and that was a big thing that I kind of questioned or thought about going into the last episode was, or not going in, but coming out of the last episode was, were we all just kind of fucked up and drunk due to issues that she's having with somebody like him, like it's only specifically, like, is it because of the relationship and the problems and the things like that, that they're having, uh, or that they're having on her own end, at least, uh, that's causing the wanting to drink and wanting to go out and wanting to forget and wanting to just kind of do something to consume you so much to the point that you don't think about that, at least in that present moment, and you can bypass a bunch of time or you can do whatever. Uh, also, was it just used as an excuse so that she can come and stay over and try and go out of her way and do whatever, right? There's plenty of things that I'm like questioning why she's acting the way she is or why this stuff's happening. And then we end up seeing in this episode, it seems all of that stuff kind of was the case. Really unfortunate to see, you know, she is taking that approach, but especially a lot of people, especially when you're younger, will definitely take approaches like that. Uh, this is where I get really like concern though is her constantly overly talking about the things that she loves so much about this guy the situation that she was in and everything as buddy just kind of like watches on and he like almost feels like we're putting on a forceful smile but it seems like he does kind of want to be here so i don't know if i'm pushing too much when i say that it feels almost like he is into emma and he's just kind of the guy who's sitting around listening to like you know all the things that she has to complain about and he's just like waiting on you know her to kind of realize that things aren't going to work out in the favor and you know go well uh, with him and then you know maybe he has an opportunity in some sort of way there now that might not be the case either i might be pushing way too much there and we can entirely go a direction where he is just friends or it, it is just a full-on friend situation we are just friendly in the situation and he just is you know a little bit worried about his friend here the way that she's acting and the way that she's kind of treating her life almost and treating a whole bunch of these different situations and he's just kind of feeling bad about it and he's just kind of putting up with it because maybe there's been situations before where he's been in where he's like i understand being on the other side of this wanting somebody to just talk to or wanting to forget these things or wanting to move past these things or not knowing how to and just like having that other person there for you uh that can constantly be with you or that you can constantly talk to or just whatever it is uh is a wonderful thing right to be able to have and maybe he just kind of can understand and feel those things i don't know uh there's different ways that we can go with it in which that we still haven't yet but we'll be able to see i guess as we continue to progress a little bit further going back through the episode as there was a lot more than i i remember that i had to end up skipping uh we end up getting this where it's nice to see like he puts on like the 
the subs and everything and he starts talking in english and trying to recite it and help himself kind of get better at, at communication and just still learning and everything and then we figure out a bit more about the sign language which i think is really really cool i like how he just kind of like comes in also just like the laid-back attitude and everything that they have together uh and i like just like their conversation flows really nicely and it doesn't feel like it's like too too anime in a way right like it almost just feels extremely natural um and they also just feel a little bit laid back together uh, in ways that maybe they aren't presenting themselves to the other earls and the stuff that we've seen you know with other people that they're with before uh which i really really like i love you know the moment that you could get to respond she gets so fucking excited uh and then we're able to see you know her go on her entire routine here as she's like getting ready going through her skincare and everything and this is these are scenes that i really like because when you have them typically in other shows you have to explore through like montage moments uh or else they just kind of come off like a little less on like a little less interesting uh but here it works because we are dropping sound so much and then we are in a state too where yuki just like isn't talking or anything right so we're able to constantly just go through this thing almost if we are presenting ourselves within her own kind of world and through you know the lens of looking through like whatever it is that she's going through here and actually going on these like uh these things and she's going out like shopping or doing whatever uh and it just feels a lot more natural like a lot more it's just the pacing of it feels uh extremely well and it's something that i think like works very very well specifically because of everything else that we've set up within this show uh that typically might not work as well otherwise this is where Emma ended up getting her whole setup there, which we just kind of went over. As Yuki goes out of her way to kind of skip meeting him, he ends up being on the fucking train, <laughs> which I like. Uh, and then a lot of the stuff that we talked about a little bit going forward uh, until the point that we end up meeting Itsomi, which I really like, you know, the moment here, he kind of just grabs on, make sure that she's okay there. He blocks her so that she doesn't have to end up seeing what Buddy's fucking saying and the things that he's just spewing to her, all the negative things. <laughs> That he's kind of give it off. I also like how she doesn't, I guess, get let into uh, exactly the things that he is saying. And I don't know if I have like too much of a read on the reasons why. One, I guess, just because everything they're saying really isn't important. If Yuki actually, you know, fully understands or knows why he's acting out or why he's saying the things that he is. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is, but still something about Buddy. I don't sit too right with me. I love Ren so much. She's so fun. <laughs> she's so she's so extra too with all of her reactions the way that she is but she's great i really hope things go extremely well for her uh i love the way that both of these two act and just kind of look odd here uh we talk about too it's only you know his dream specifically and the way that he's been and the way that he's had to turn down so many girls and him not wanting specifically to see yuki get like hurt in the situation or just at least have warning beforehand uh but also like him wanting the best or wanting to see his friend like kind of in the situation or find somebody you know that he actually feels like he can be with in this and it doesn't like interrupt him or the things that he is trying to find and the things that he's trying to do it's really nice like just a great supportive relationship in which they have and that's where you get to see the two of these two being like absolutely acting in sync here but having the exact same kind of feelings and and acting out in that same sort of way i'm just wanting whatever their friend wants to be like to work but also just like wanting what's best for them uh, at the end of the day and i think it's just i don't know it's really sweet as we go on our trip here and yuki gets to see so many things that she likely may have not seen before uh she seems extremely excited about it i think these moments are really fun and cute specifically talking about how big they are <laughs> being so much bigger than her and then we start talking about too like she starts thinking about things that literally have never even crossed my mind at least about like the way that people kind of present themselves with the tone of voice in which they're using right something she's never really had to think about or doesn't really i guess understand uh and it's similar to the thing that she presented before where she's like people like the way that certain people sign right and you can kind of just tell by watching like their fingers or just like how it, how they're doing it right it's almost like how much care and attention and passion and stuff like you have within the things that you're doing it's similar in a way to the way that somebody speaks and the tone of voice that they have right when they're with somebody especially like a lot of times when you see somebody with like a pet or like an animal or whatever right like the way that they speak to them is entirely different right it's like a much softer a much more like caring kind of tone of voice that they're trying to present uh as opposed to just being like aggressive or angry or like just whatever the the situation kind of would 
would dictate towards you being so them kind of pointing out the idea of the way that he's speaking is so like affectionately like towards her uh something that he doesn't usually end up doing gets her questioning like does he always talk to me like this is he always like this especially when we're one-on-one -on -one? and just not having a clue or not being able to fully understand uh i think is just really fun to really think about but he given sales pitches and i love as these two just kind of watch on here this too just i'm gonna bring you along next time but it's not necessarily like i'm gonna stuff you in here and do this but it's more of like the ideas and the things and, and stuff that you kind of bring into or like open up into my own kind of world and also present to me and and have kind of made me had my eyes open to at least uh can be something that i think is presented or done extremely well as we talk about like traveling and how she hasn't really gone but people with sign language can do things a lot better because it's easier to kind of express yourself than trying to speak the same language as somebody else uh you're able to kind of connect in that sort of way so him being able to find that connection that he has with her and the things that he has learned from her is going to be very effective in a way uh if he's ever in a situation where he finds himself struggling or whatever going forward and i think that that's really really cool ren getting fucking freaked out here being told the, about like if she likes him and everything i think is fantastic and him just kind of setting us up and i'm being like yo go tell him this go do this of course he's going to be accepting of it which i think is great and it splits the two of us up uh and it allows everybody to have their alone time and do something which i think is wonderful uh you could get shut down while wanting to go get food which i i love too her just always being on the the aggression there right always being the one who's pushing for us to kind of go do something or wanting to do something and not being so shy and just waiting for him to kind of make those moves and do those things uh and actually presenting it i love that but then him kind of flipping it on her after denying her and being like oh you can just come back to my place and we'll get something i think is great i think the likely situation is we run into emma when we're there uh we did just talk about the idea that she was just out drinking and everything again today that was earlier throughout the episode so i would not be entirely surprised uh if we if that was the same day at least uh or if like we end up getting home and it's like later at night and she is there wouldn't put it past her that would also allow her to kind of have her eyes open to the exact situation that's kind of going on with Yuki. Um, so I think that's probably likely, but if she isn't, I'm definitely down for us just to go home and eat food together and <laughs> have a new experience together. So that'd be really fun. Gonna be all for me. Absolutely lovely episode as always. Uh, and I'm very excited to see kind of how this progresses a little bit more. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like it all, the like and subscribe to me on to me. Feel free to check out the other videos on the channel. Leave me comments with this episode of series. I'll be back next time for episode five. You guys have a good one. Peace.